Hi everyone, Brightbone here, back with another video. And today I'm continuing our series on setting up a multi-factor phishing infrastructure. So to set up a multi-factor phishing infrastructure, one of the most important things we can do is authenticate our mail domain. We want to authenticate it so it looks just like any other mail sender on the internet. This is a step I see a lot of security people miss. You need to do this or some of your phish email will not be delivered correctly. It'll get knocked out of transit because it doesn't match DMARC, the DKIM keys don't match, SPF, or it will say, okay, your, your domain name is illegitimate. I'm not gonna let you send this mail. So you don't get a good test, right? And you're also not getting possibly missing some credentials that somebody would click on and send you through your multi-factor phishing infrastructure. So to do this, we need to set up three things, SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. Setting these up is quite easy. Uh, the service that we're gonna use for this, called, which is SendGrid, basically produces these for you and you just put them in your DNS. So what's Sender Policy Framework? Sender Policy Framework is an email authentication method and it's designed to detect the forging of the sender during the mail transmission. So when the mail server is sending, it detects whether it is a legitimate mail uh, from domain, right? If you combine that with DMARC, you can then check to see the visible email address is legitimate. So SPF DMARC, the two most common technologies to prevent sender spoofing. We're not gonna be doing any kind of spoofing here, so it won't matter, but we don't want to be detected in any way. We want to look legitimate. The more of these technologies you have in place, the higher your reputation typically will be from the mail receiver. DMARC, as I kind of mentioned, DMARC stands for Domain-Based Method Message Authentication Reporting and Conformance. I always get that acronym wrong. But DMARC's place is that it does more spoofing protection, right? It protects the sender from being forged, and that's what you always want. So if the sender is not forged, that mail server is going to trust you more, right? DMARC, quite simple to put in place. The final thing that we're going to set up is DKIM. Now, DKIM is Domain Keys Identified Mail. So what this is, is a key that lives in the official DNS record. And if you receive a mail without that key and they're not verified, it will not allow the mail to go through. So if somebody spoofs or sends from an address that doesn't match the DMARC policy and DKIM, it will not be allowed to send that mail into the system. So like I mentioned before, we're gonna be using SendGrid for this setup. Uh, our backend of course is Evil GoFish. GoFish will use the API key that it's given to send mail through SendGrid and then SendGrid will send the fish for you. User will click on the link, link will come back to your multi-factor phishing host. So SendGrid, quite easy to set up. Once you get into SendGrid, you need to make sure that your email or your domain is ready to work with SendGrid that you've got the correct records in there for basic setup. Once you've done that, you're gonna to wanna to go into settings and mail settings, or actually, excuse me, sender authentication. Once you click sender authentication, you're gonna to wanna to go to authenticate your domain. Now, authentication of your domain is a simple process. It's gonna create the DKIM SPF, and your uh, DMARC record will create manually after the fact. It's gonna create all the things necessary for SendGrid to send on your behalf. So I'm gonna choose Cloudflare, which is my DNS host, and I'm gonna choose yes, rewrite all the tracking links. This is probably going to fail because I've already done this, but uh, you want to do this step when you're doing your first setup. That way you don't have to come back in and revalidate. We're gonna choose next. And then the domain you're going to be sending from. What is your domain? What did you buy? What are you phishing from? So in this case, it'll be cheshire-it.com. It's a domain I already own. It's what I set up for the first video. You're going to choose advanced settings and you don't want to use automated security. You do want to use a custom link subdomain and you want to use DKIM selector. Now your link subdomain, you can give this any name you want. I'll put in verifier. I'll actually, I already used MX Verifier, so we'll, we'll use test just for this because it's not, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to actually use this. 
But your DKIM selector, you want to do V13. That's version 13 of DKIM. Very common version. You can research the different versions of DKIM and determine if you want to move to a newer one or an older one, however you want to do it. V13 is the one I typically use because it's pretty common. Choose next. Now, this is what you need to copy into your DNS record, right? Now, this is everything you would need. You can see test.cheshire-it.com, valuesandgrid.net, your CNAME, these are CNAME records. This is your MX record for your mail server, em5530.cheshire-it.com. That goes to mx.sendgrid.net. This is your SPF record. VS, V equals SPF1, sendgrid all. And then this is your domain key, your DKIN. DMARC will set up after on our own. So this is SPF and DKIN, not DMARC, okay? So if we jump over here into our record, you can see down here, I have my domain key from my previous authentication. I have my SPF record, and this is the record that I need to create for DMARC. So if I hit edit here, you can see I do underscore DMARC, and then I do P equals none. That means policy equals none, and then V equals DMARC one. So this is basically an open DMARC policy, right? I haven't set a policy here. The policy is none, but DMARC is there. Now you can also see up here, here is my C name for SendGrid. Here is my opposite C name. Here is my MX verifier that I use. This would match test over here. Since I use test, the previous one I used is MX verifier. So MX verifier. Then I have URL 1721, URL 8151, and these all map over to SendGrid.net. So when you put these in, and depending on how quickly your DNS populates, once you're done, you would then go to verify. Now, I'm not going to verify from this one. I'm going to verify from my previous authentication. <clears throat> and you can see verify up here. I hit verify and it says it worked. So you want to see it worked. Once you see it worked, you're good. Now, uh, the link branding should have happened at the time that you verified up here. So you should be able to come down here and see a link branding as well. These are the other two records that have to be in there. And when you hit verify here, this should go, it worked too. As long as both of them show it worked, then your SedGrind account is ready for you to send through it. The last thing you need is an API key. So you need an API key for GoFish. Now I already have an API key here for GoFish. So you go create API key. You can give it whatever access you want. Just be careful with exactly what you need or you need to give it full access, we can just go test here, create and view, and it's gonna create an API key for you. Now just realize, once you see this, you're never gonna see it again. You'll have to recreate it if you need another API key. And another interesting thing is notice, it won't let me click done. You have to click on this key and it shows copied and then it will let you click done. I thought that was an interesting piece. I haven't seen other uh, utilities do that before. And now I have an API key. This will go into GoFish at the end of our series when we're setting up GoFish and Evil GoFish, but you need that API key to move forward. So that's basically it. Once you've set up the authentication with SPF, DMARC, and DKIM, you are ready to go from the authentication perspective. The next step is to set up GoFish and Evil GoFish separate, if you so choose, or you can do, uh, excuse me, GoFish, and Evil Jinx 2 separate, or you can do Evil Go Fish, which combines them for you. I typically just do Evil Go Fish because it comes with a lot of little extras plus some ad additional lures that are nice. Uh, the Office 365 lure, uh, Office version two is a better lure. So I just use that when I do my setup. And that'll be the third part in this series. And that's it for today. Thank you. Once again, hack the planet to defend better.